The 2020 MLB season was interesting to say the least because it wasn't a marathon like typical years. It was a sprint and one of the reasons why we saw star players such as Jose Altuve post terrible numbers while others like Dominic Smith found themselves towards the top in most offensive categories. But there was no one more surprising than Luke Voigt. Who at the beginning of the season, no one thought he would lead the league in home runs, but he did, managing to hit 22 in just 56 games, but in the years following, he was not able to add upon the success he found during the abbreviated season and has left us all wondering why 2020 was such an outlier in his career. Prior to Voigt's move to the Bronx, he was coming off a difficult year and a half in the Cardinals organization, being transferred between the majors and minors a total of eight times because there was no room for him at first base. In 2017, the Cards fielded Matt Carpenter and Jose Martinez a total of 147 times at the position, and the two were largely affected with 84 runs scored, 25 home runs, and 83 RBIs to go along with a mid-800 OPS. The success these two yielded the Cardinals made Voigt less of a need. That's actually why they tested him as an outfield during spring training of 2018, and no offense to Voigt at all, but he was a power hitting first baseman, not an agile corner outfielder. And although it didn't work, I don't blame him or the club for testing it out, because they knew his bat was worth a lineup spot, and all he wanted to do was play ball, which for him meant he had to go back to AAA. Back in the minors, Voigt would continue to prove to the organization his bat was something special, but by the end of July, Carpenter already had 26 home runs and 57 RBIs to go along with an OPS almost reaching 1,000. And Martinez was also swinging the bat well with 13 long balls of his own, with an almost 300 average and over 800 OPS. Because of their surplus of quality first baseman, the cards went to the trade market and acquired relievers Jason Shreve and Giovanni Gallegos for Voigt. This was a match made in heaven, as the Yankees had great depth in their bullpen and desperately needed a first baseman, something the club hadn't had since Mark Teixeira's 2015 campaign when he posted 3.3 war in 111 games, with an OPS topping 900. Because in 2016, although Teixeira remained the club's everyday first baseman, he was not able to maintain his success at 36 years old. In 2017, Chris Carter and Greg Bird manned the position the most, but produced subpar offensive numbers. And in 2018, it was more the same for the Yankees as they struggled with finding their preferred first baseman as the two that received the majority of the play time once again couldn't contribute much on the offensive side. So the club brought up Voigt in early August to get a taste of what he could do at the majors, but in his first five games, he hit to the tune of a 188 average and 423 OPS, prompting the club to send him back to the minors for a week and a half where he was recalled one once again, not as the everyday first baseman, rather a power hitter that could come off the bench late in games. Except that changed when the club gave him the start against the Baltimore Orioles on August 24th. That one in the air, and that's what he does. Way back, left center field, and goodbye home run. Delivery on the way, and that's in the air to right. He got a hold of that one. Way up, way back, and goodbye home run. With this stellar performance against the O's, the club was confident giving Voigt steady playtime for the rest of the season, and he went on an absolute tear. In comparison to the rest of the league in any player's final 32 games of the season, his 14 home runs ranked the best in all of baseball, his 31 RBIs tied him for the second most, and his 1190 OPS also tied him for the second highest. The success he found to end off the 2018 season put him in a great position to receive every day at bats in 2019. And over the first three months of the season, he was tearing the seams off of baseballs with 53 runs scored, 17 homers, and 50 RBIs, as well as a 280 average and 901 OPS. To put in perspective, if he kept up this pace over the course of 650 plate appearances, which is roughly the average for a full season's worth of opportunities, he would finish the year with 98 runs scored, 31 homers, and 93 RBIs. These are incredible totals, but this didn't happen. At the end of June, Voigt suffered a hernia that kept him out for a couple of weeks, and when he came back, he wasn't able to relight the same spark he had at the beginning of the season, and he actually had to go back on the injury list in early August, with reports stating he didn't feel 100% returning from the first IL stint, but he felt good enough to play. It got worse and got to the point he was thinking about it while playing and had trouble getting loose. He's still hoping to avoid surgery, but to be determined. Voigt decided against surgery until the offseason and finished the year limping to the finish line, managing just four home runs and 12 RBIs in his final 40 games to go along with a 228 average and 715 OPS. 
The injury he sustained was further proven to be the downfall of his season when he met with a doctor during the offseason regarding his hernia when he mentioned he tore everything in his abdomen. But he assured everyone he was feeling good for 2020, stating, I can finally run again. I'm not saying I'm going to steal 20 bases this year, but when I'm swinging, I'm staying in my lower half now. Last year, I didn't have my legs. My legs are everything when I'm hitting, so I didn't have any power. Voigt's eagerness to get back on the field was a great sign that he was ready to go once the season started, but opening day had to be put on hold in March, and following a lengthy negotiation process, the league was able to begin their campaign in late July. The 2020 season was odd for many reasons and halted many players' promising careers, but not for Voigt. In just the third game of the season, he reminded everyone of the immense power he held with a game-tying solo home run in the top of the seventh against the Nationals. This home run proved to be vital as it helped the club take the lead in the following inning, and they would go on to win by that score. Then, in his next game, he proved to be even more decisive with the bat, hitting a grand slam to help the Yankees go up 5-0, all before the Orioles even had a chance to get to the plate. The point is, he got hot early and stayed that way throughout the entire season. Yes, I know it was just 60 games, but anyways, in total, he played in 56 contests for the Yankees, hitting 22 home runs and knocking in 52 guys while posting a solid 277 average and 948 OPS. His power presence was one of the main talking points all season long and for good reason. Season. He finished first in home runs, being the only player to top 20, fourth in RBIs, and second in isolated power, just 11 points off the league leader Juan Soto. In fact, his season was rather historic in terms of Yankees history, becoming just one of 14 to ever lead the league in home runs. He joined an extremely exclusive list topped by Aaron Judge, Roger Maris, and Babe Ruth, not to mention other guys such as Lou Gehrig, Joe DiMaggio, and Mickey Mantle. Those are the names Voigt found himself alongside. Pretty decent company, if you ask me, and it was deserved. We had seen him struggle to get playing time in St. Louis and initially when he made the jump to the Bronx. But in his fourth big league season, he was finally finding himself atop the majority of the offensive leaderboards. And to show just how powerful his bat was, let me show you something. In Aaron Judge's record-setting 2022 season, when he launched 62 long balls, he had a homer on average of every 11.23 plate appearances. In 2020, Voigt averaged a homer in fewer opportunities at 1064. Now, this isn't to say if the 2020 season were 162 games, we would be hailing Voigt as the American League home run record holder, because to keep up that pace for 162 games is a different beast. I instead wanted to show this comparison to put into context of how powerful he was on a game-to-game -game basis. Yeah, I think it's safe to say 2020 couldn't have gone much better for Voigt, who had solidified himself as one of the game's premier power hitters. And 2021 was supposed to be a continuation of that, but unfortunately, this is where everything started to unravel. In spring training, Voigt tore his meniscus while making an aggressive slide, which resulted in him having surgery. This was supposed to keep him out until June, however, he returned a month early, which might not have been the best idea as he managed just a 182 average and 530 OPS in 12 games before going on the injured list this time for an oblique injury. This once again kept him out from game action and the Yankees offense was struggling mightily because of it. Through July, the club ranked just 25th in terms of runs scored, nestled between the Kansas City Royals and St. Louis Cardinals. In 2021, those were not the teams you wanted to be surrounded by when it came to scoring runs. That's why the club couldn't wait any longer and decided to go out and acquire a big name bat via trade, and on July 29th, the Yankees acquired Anthony Rizzo from the Chicago Cubs. Up until the trade, Rizzo wasn't necessarily playing to the best of his abilities, with 14 homers and 40 RBIs in 92 games to go along with an OPS just shy of 800, but he brought something the Yankees desperately needed, power from the left side of the batter's box. For example, in 2020, the Yankees lefties finished 27th in terms of home runs with a mark of just 10, and in terms of average, they finished 25th worst with a figure right at the Mendoza line. It was clear they were in dire need of help from the left side of the batter's box and a more consistent name at first with Voigt not able to remain healthy. That's why Rizzo was the perfect fit for the club, but in the process, Dean Voigt useless, with first base now Rizzo's and Stanton manning the DH position, forcing him to become just a spot starter with pinch hit opportunities. It was a sad follow-up for one of the league's best hitters the year prior, but that's what happens when you're not able to suit up. The club is going to move on, and with Rizzo as well as Stanton looking to man the same positions in 2022, the club was forced to part ways with Voigt, and he was ultimately shipped off to San Diego prior to the season's start. 2022 
was a difficult year for Voigt as he had to get acclimated with a brand new ball club, not once but twice being used as a chip in the Juan Soto blockbuster. And in the nation's capital, he was not able to find a groove, finishing the year with a 226 average and 710 OPS, despite hitting a respectable 22 homers and knocking in 69 runs in 135 games. Then for the 2023 season, it was more of the same. This time with the Brewers, he was sidelined for a neck injury that cost him about two weeks of action, and in the end, he only managed to feature in just 22 games, hitting zero home runs in 74 plate appearances. And following a release by the New York Mets just a few days prior to the start of the 2024 season, Voigt has yet to find his new club. So the question must be asked, is this the end, and why was he not able to replicate anything close to his 2020 season in the years following? To me, there are two main reasons why. For starters, do you remember the quote from earlier in the video that stated Voigt was eager to get back on the field despite not being 100%? Well, this seemed to be the case each time he got hurt. In 2019, the hernia completely derailed a promising start to the season, a foot injury was nagging him all year in 2020, and the years after, he still couldn't remain healthy with knee inflammation in 2021, biceps in 2022, and his neck in 2023. These injuries made it impossible for any club to be able to rely on him and made him even worse defensively. From 2019 to 2023, he was by far the worst defensive first baseman in terms of defensive runs saved, with negative 18 in just over 1,800 innings in the field, while the player with the second lowest Josh Bell managed negative 14 in almost 4,000 innings, proving that if he had received regular playing time at first throughout these years, his figure could have been twice as bad as the second worst in baseball. Because of this, he would have to become a primary DH, and while it was great the league made the position universal, the majority of teams liked to rotate guys through as sort of a half day off to keep them fresh, meaning if they were to employ a guy who clogged up the spot, he would need to be excelling with the bat, which Voigt had not been. Between 2022 and 23, he featured in about a full season's worth of games, managing 22 homers and 73 RBIs. Those are great numbers, but the 206 strikeouts and 98 OPS plus will always scare a team away and one of the main reasons why he remains teamless now three weeks into the season. But I don't want the information you take away from this video to be so negative, because the truth of the matter is, he had a great career. He was one of the most dominant power hitters from the time of his acquisition with the Yankees in 2018 all the way through 2020, and during this time he joined an extremely exclusive list where he's able to find his name alongside the likes of the greatest Yankee players ever to wear a pinstripes. Oh yeah, and $13 million isn't too bad either. Alright, that wraps it up for this video. If you enjoyed, here are two more I'm sure you'll love, and I will see you in the next one.